You already know Edgar Belanga representing New York City and all things Puerto Rico. The chosen one improved his record to 21 and 0. No losses, no draws. 16 wins violently by the way of knockout. My man Belanga is the truth. He beat down Jason Quigley. We're going to get into everything. He The fight didn't go as planned, as scheduled, but he did finish like a champion and we're gonna get into it all he made his match room debut we all know we're gonna get into everything he left top rank it was a big fiasco now with a new promotion do we see greener pastures for him he vowed to finish to start his fights like he ended that 12th round so let's see if there's a new page that has changed for mr edgar belanger we're gonna get all into it but nonetheless he has one tonight. So let's get all into it. My man Phonix was good. What's your thoughts on this fight? Um, what up, man? Um, yo, I think um Edgar Belenga, man, you know what I'm saying? I, I I didn't have a lot of respect for him coming into this fight, and I'm not gonna lie. His last couple of fights, man, he he was he's looked bad. Um he started out slow. Um and this fight was no different really in the beginning. He kind of started out slow. I mean he he did catch quickly with a quick knockdown in, I believe, the third round, fourth round. Um, he's coming off a year layoff, and he looked like it. But he turned it on at the end, man, and he knocked Quigley down twice in the, in the, in the 12th and final round. Um, he, he clearly had him hurt, and Quigley um, clearly underestimated Edgar Belanger's power, which he does possess. Um, I, um, after the fight, you know, he's, Edgar Belanger spoke, and I really had to respect him because he was being very serious. Then he graded himself a C. There was no smiles on his face. You know, he knows he has to get better. He he wants he wants better competition, and he and if he wants that, he's gonna have to step his game up, man. But everybody has to get out of early at Gabalenga with the sixteen KOs. That was early on. Every fighter is not every fight is not gonna be the same. You're not gonna knock everybody out. And tonight, he clearly showed that he still possesses that power, but he found another way to win. And as he said with Quigley, Quigley was just trying to survive, which he was. He was throwing a few jabs here and there, moving around, but he he really didn't want to feel that power. And then you know he got tired in the, in, that, in that last round, and he could and, and Edgar Belanger caught him slipping. Yeah, absolutely, man. Like he said, he got, he know he's had the cannon. All the stars popped out tonight for Edgar Belanger. He he's definitely a magnetic figure, especially around New York City. We see him all over the place. Everybody knows who he is. Um, it seems like everybody wants to get behind him. I think, obviously, you, I don't know if you've seen his coach. His coach was very, very animate. What was your thoughts on him? He was very vocal uh, and going off. Talk to me about that aspect of this fight. Well, yeah, the, the, that's interesting because the, the, the commentators brought that up as well, and they were saying, you know, how that could, you know, um, be potentially bad when you come at a fighter like that. But the other commentator added that, that's why Edgar Belenga went back with his old trainer because that's what he wanted. And clearly, once he got that talking to, he woke up somewhat. And he and he really woke up in the 10th, 11th, and 12th round. That's when he woke up. So obviously, something clicked into him. Now, you know, he's not going to get too many more opportunities to fight in his home state. You know what I'm saying? Especially his home city at that, which is New York City. He's from Brooklyn. So he's going to have to, you know, he's going to have to turn it up, man, because he was at home and looking like that. I mean, I understand this a year left, but you at home, bro. You at home, and the crowd's behind you. You know, when I seen Clarissa Shields fight in her hometown of Detroit, man, we were her home state, right, rather, because she's from Flint, Michigan. But fighting in Detroit and how the city in the city and the state was out for her, that fueled her. You know what I'm saying? That gave her that energy to, to, to give her all. And he, he's going to have to he's gonna have to dig deep, man, next time. But, you know, he promised the fans that um, from now on, every fight is going to begin like the 12th round ending. That's what he guaranteed. So we'll see if he can live up to that. Uh, we bring, he brings up a lot of different names. Obviously, um, they 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 want to see him in bigger bouts. Uh, you don't move on from top rank to match room without big fights in sight. Uh, what does he need to improve? Obviously, defensively, I feel like he takes a lot of punishment, unnecessary <laughs> punishment. What what is he gonna have to improve on if he wants to see the Canellos of the world, the Triple Gs of the world, like he stated? What does he have to sharpen up to to, to be competitive? Because that's a whole nother ball game. He he has to be more patient and stop having the um the the knockout um boxers mentality where 
every hit gonna be is gonna be a big hit. Because if you do that with Triple G and you get caught slipping, you're gonna get knocked out cold. Or Canelo. Or any of the or any of the great fighters, you're gonna get knocked out cold. You you can't do that. Every every punch, you know, you're looking to potentially knock somebody out. You're gonna get caught on the chin, man, and you're gonna go down. You know, so he, he's gonna have to be more patient and he's gonna have to plan his his punches more timely and more wisely. And I believe that his trainers need to, you know, get him into in working with the body, man. He got to learn how to work on the body, too. I mean, that's so um, important in today's boxing. I mean, if you watch any of the great fighters today, Shakur Stevenson, um, uh, Crawford, Spence, you know, um, even your fighter, what's his name, the young boy, um, Kid Austin. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They go to the body, man, because that's what wears your opponent out quick. So, yeah. Yeah, you're right about that. Uh, you got to go for the body. Um, I heard Coach Calvin Ford tell Javante Tank Davis, stop headhunting. That's how you get the head. You know, um, they, so when you don't go always looking for the knockout, eventually it comes to you, you know? There you go. Absolutely right. Yeah. So um, w w what's next for Belanga? Um, obviously, w what do you see him? What's the difference between top rank and him moving over the match room with, uh, quickly? Oh, okay. Um, well, Eddie Hearn, who's the owner of Matchroom, man, um, he don't play. He he likes he like he loves boxing, obviously. And he likes to make big fights. On top rank, man, they just sit on you. You know what I'm saying? They just sit on you. And actually, if he was on top rank, though, he'd probably be fighting three times this year. But he said he wants to fight again this year. So we'll see who Eddie Hearn gonna chop up for, man. You know what I'm saying? But um, I I think he'll find somebody for him, and I think it'll, it's gonna be good competition. Right. I like her and it seems like he's very vocal after every fight. He's in the ring, you know. Um he, he did I seen him do that with Regis. You know, um it seems like like I said, this, this man is trying to do big things in the sport of boxing. Do you see him trying to put on some of the best fights there is, like you see some of the other promoters? Absolutely. And I think I think I think Eddie Hearn is gonna come up, man. And I think Matt right. Boxing is gonna come up. You know, yeah. I, I definitely think it's gonna come up and um, I think he's going to attract more fighters. From what I hear, he pays them very well. That's why Edgar Belenga went over there. And that's why I'm telling you, I want Shakur Stevenson. Hell, I want all the good fighters to leave top rank. Because I feel like their career, if, if, if Crawford, Terrence Crawford, Doug Crawford never left top rank, he wouldn't be fighting Errol Spence right now. That's just a fact. Because Bob Allen would not have made that fight. You know, wow. he had to leave. He's, a, he's just an a-hole like that, man. He likes to sit on fighters, man. And, and, you know, that's why Bud Crawford had to leave. Bud Crawford got tired of, of, of fighting, basically, for, for peanuts. You know what I'm saying? You, yo, this is like, what, Bud Crawford's maybe second or third um, uh, pay-per-view fight? When he was with Top Wing, he was fighting on Saturdays on ESPN. Mm -hmm. he, wasn't fighting on, he wasn't fighting on a major card. Right. You no. Know? So, so we'll, we'll, we'll get into it, man. But definitely, shout out Edgar Belanga. We want to celebrate his victory tonight. Uh, remaining undefeated. Shout out Puerto Rico. If you're a boxing fan, make sure you subscribe to Flight Sports. Salute to New York City. Finance, any closing remarks? No, nah, that's it, bro. Peace and love. It's Flight Sports.